Good evening, everybody. It is August 23rd, 2024. It is 8.06 in the evening. Okay, so what I've got for you for this video is part 6 of chapter 7, Sandy Freed's Understanding Your Dreams. This section is called, God Gives Us Dreams of Hope. As I wrote earlier, one of the most significant reasons that I personally believe God gives us dreams and visions is for us to be edified, exhorted, and comforted. Many times, God will encourage us and give hope so that we can endure the race. When symbolism is meant to give us hope from God, the dream can be full of images such as doors opening, new paths being taken, or boats and anchors, since Christ is our anchor of hope. See Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19. Sometimes a dream confirms that we are on the right path and exhorts us to fight the good fight of faith. Other times, he may be revealing that someone besides you needs to be encouraged. Keep in mind that the complete revelation of a dream will come in with time. It may take years for a full interpretation to come forth, but God will give you just enough to offer hope. As you know, I have almost died several times in my life. Even after recovery from anorexia, I continued to battle the spirit of death. Part of the sickness that I dealt with included digestive disorders. The thought of returning to an old pattern of sickness and disease was frightening as I asked the Lord to reveal what was happening to my body. I fell asleep and the Lord gave a dream that involved much symbolism that pointed the way to hope. I was searching for rock treasures in an open field. I realized that I had stepped on something because my foot began to sting, followed by a painful ache in my heel. Upon observing my foot, I realized a snake's head was smashed into my heel with its fangs stuck in the bottom of my foot. Obviously, I had stepped on the serpent's head. I called for my husband to remove the snake's head, and we noticed that the head was so crushed into my heel, the only way to remove it was to peel it away. My heel began to have a dull pain, and I remembered that I had been through this experience before. The memory of that previous battle for my life was too fresh. It engulfed me like a shroud. In my dream, I was cringing, thinking about having to go through this again. As my husband pulled back the fangs, I remembered this assignment of death, and I wondered if I would soon die because of the venom that was already in my system. Suddenly, a medical journal flashed before my eyes. The journal opened to a specific chapter and page which read, This is a medical journal on how to treat a snake bite. This particular bite causes digestive disorders. The dream ended. Clearly, I had my answer from the Lord. All the physical and emotional discomfort I was experiencing was the result of a demonic assignment. It was not the result of poor eating habits or stress, and I was not going to die. Hallelujah! My faith arose within me, along with a fresh determination to fight the good fight of faith. The Lord revealed this dream for encouragement. I was to continue looking for the treasures of his kingdom, knowing he was protecting me. If I had not been given the dream, I would have attempted to change my diet or take various medications. The Lord was instructing me that I was to rise up in faith and fight the enemy. In situations as uncertainty, we often need confirmation from the Lord. Confirmation brings us comfort, like a lamp unto our feet when we are blinded in the darkness. Okay, this section is called, Why Will God Not Speak Plainly? 
Some of you may be asking why it appears so difficult to hear God's voice through dreams and visions. After all, God could simply send an angel to direct us, just as he did in the Old and New Testaments. In this age of doubt and unbelief, I am not entirely positive that even an angel would get our attention. Our culture and false belief systems are contaminated with mindsets that inhibit supernatural manifestations. I have come to, under to the understanding that God gives us dreams because he has to bypass our minds to speak to our spirits. If we consider the biblical account of Zacharias, we find that even an angel visits a priest to give him the word of the Lord. He may still doubt. Take a moment to read Luke chapter 1 verses 15 through 18. The biblical account of the angel Gabriel announcing to Zacharias that he would have a son who would bring revival to the sons of Israel. Keep in mind that this was a visitation from God that probably came in the form of a vision. And Zacharias basically argues with the messenger. Dear one, it is time to listen once more. Due to his doubt and unbelief, Zacharias was struck dumb and was unable to speak until the day John the Baptist was circumcised. It is quite clear that at times God may have to shut our mouths to halt our negativity. So why does God not speak to us in plain speech? Because even an angelic visit that communicates the word of the Lord may not be enough to keep us from questioning him. Let me repeat this for significance. He may yet bypass our minds and speak to our spirits in a dream or vision, or else we might argue with him and contaminate the prophesied seeds of revelation. And knowing my history of doubt, I am glad he does. Saints, we do not have control over what we dream. God simply pops a dream into our spirits, very similar to inserting a DVD into a DVD player. Sometimes he reveals areas that we do not want to see about ourselves in the future. Many of us, myself included, have blind spots, things we are blinded to. God reveals hidden areas of our hearts, the inner motives that we would rather not see. He also reveals how we feel toward others in our hearts, jealousy, envy, competition, and the like. But bypassing the mind, God goes right to the spirit. He speaks spirit to spirit because he does not desire negative influences to override our faith. When we awake from dreams, we cannot arise and proclaim, I made myself dream about this. We cannot make ourselves dream anything. This is one area over which we have no control, and this is probably why God chooses to use it. You are doing great. Thank you for continuing this journey with me. Now let's discuss simple ways to document your dreams and a few keys to consider as you interpret them. Okay, so that's all for this video and that's all for chapter seven. If you like this content, like this video, feel free to comment below, share this with somebody that you think might need it. And don't forget to go out there and rainbow it. Fill the world with love, peace, joy, charity, all the good fruits of the spirit. Thank you and have a good night, have a good day, or have a good evening, depending on what time you're watching this.